What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Another TRX install video today. I'm going to be installing some more uh, LED lighting on the TRX. Uh, let me go ahead and show you over here what we're going to be installing. I went ahead and did an unboxing video in my last video. These are the knockoff LP9s that you could buy on you know, eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, anything like that. Uh, they're basically just a complete knockoff of the LP9s basically. The only thing that is different is obviously the LP9 is going to be way better quality and these are definitely a lot smaller. So these are considered a 5 inch LED. Um, I believe they measure more like a 4.8 inches where I think the LP9 is a 7 inch light. But you can see we got the 9 LEDs in there. So they're definitely modeled after the LP9 but they're definitely a lot smaller. So this is what we're going to be installing. and. I showed you in the other video where the placement was going to be, but I figured I'll do it on this one as well. It's going to be right there, but it's going to be behind the actual mesh grill. So you can kind of see like that one little black piece back there. Probably going to have to um, kind of like just make a hole in there to try and set this light in there. And then it could be just, you know, pretty uh, clean looking behind the grill. I have seen um, some off-road company do that install and it looks super clean so that's what we're going to be aiming for in this video so yeah guys lp9 knockoffs hopefully they're uh, pretty good quality so you can see just like the lp9 it has the um dedicated wire for the amber backlighting so we're going to be wiring this up to one of the auxiliary switches as well as the power so you can see here, it just has the wire. So what I went ahead and did was also order the wiring harness as well. This is just like a universal wiring harness that you can get on eBay. I paid, I believe $11 for this. And you know, if you're good with electrical, you can go ahead and make your own wiring harness. But I mean, for $10, I figured, you know, why not? I'll go ahead and probably cut this up because I won't need to be using a lot of it since this does have a uh, inline fuse as well as a switch. Uh, the fuse are not going to need the switch obviously and then since you are wiring it up to the auxiliary switches in the trx you already are um fused so you don't really need an inline fuse but we basically cutting this up just to make it a little bit easier for the install as well so first thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and get the grill removed on the trx so i'm going to go ahead put the camera down and get that done so I believe what we gotta do first is just remove this little cover. This just pulls right up. And then we gotta get this um, front shroud off. And these are just like the little retainer clips, like the fast clips on there. I think there's like 14, maybe 16 of them. So what we're gonna have to do is just remove these. And then I believe that there's gonna be some more like a 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna have to remove. So once you pop those off, then you need to come down here kind of just pull this little trim piece you see how it's like super flexible you pull this just to gain more access i think to three more screws down here and then you could go ahead and pull the grill out so it's a little bit more involved than um the rebel was but shouldn't be all too hard so i'm gonna go ahead that uh, get that done and then i can uh kind of show you along the way as i'm getting it done since you know kind of hard to do with one hand all right so now we got the front shroud off you can see we got another uh speed clip right here as well as the uh 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna have to remove so go ahead and get that done then also gonna need to take out this bolt up here this bolt up here and then we'll go ahead and we'll keep on going with it okay so now with that other piece removed which was right here we could go ahead and start removing the actual grill itself which is attached by the four bolts up here as well as the three bolts behind here so let's keep going all right so as you can see right here went ahead pulled these pieces back to gain access to those other bolts in here this part is uh super sketchy to do uh it feels like you're gonna go uh you know snap onto these things but just give it some force and it'll pop out there and then you can see these little clips just kind of slide right back into there so this is probably the sketchiest part of you know the entire removal of the grill so just you know <laughs> don't be you know scared to pull it and it it's more durable than you really think it is we have removed the front grill 
it's sitting right over here. Definitely a little bit more of a involved process um, over the Rebel, but you know, all in all, it's not really that hard. It's the first time um, I've taken it off and it took me maybe 30 minutes just taking my time with everything. So as you can see, went ahead, removed all of the uh, screws from up here, put them back. You do have to remove three additional ones up here as well. And then one more piece right up here to, to uh, like remove this little um, kind of like vent cover right up here on the fender so you could go ahead and actually pry out the front bumper uh, you do have to more or less you know finagle it out a little bit just so you don't really scratch anything but all in all it's pretty simple so basically what I have to try and do now is figure out how I'm gonna mount these I'm assuming I'm just gonna drill or not drill but cut out like a diameter hold up here so I can basically stick the light into and then secure it um, behind it somehow since there's not really all that much room here and I'm also working with the washer fluid cover right here since that's where one of the lights is going to sit so I do need to basically mess with it a little bit just so we can get clearance because I don't really want this rubbing up against the light and I don't really want the light rubbing it up against the grill uh, mesh so I'm gonna go ahead see what I can figure out and I'll check in with you guys in a bit all right, guys, unfortunately, had to go ahead and close the garage. The weather didn't quite agree with us, and we kind of ran out of daylight anyway. So as you can see back here, I've started to uh, more or less lay out where I'm actually going to be installing these lights. Also went ahead and drilled a pilot hole right in the middle here just so I can uh, get a little bit more grip when I go ahead and uh, drill out this entire hole. But as you can see, that is a 5-inch diameter hole right there so this is where they are going to be mounted on both sides so easy way to do the cutout is get drill a uh, hole drill then obviously you know you have your center right there that just goes into it and then you can drill out perfect circles you know to install your actual lighting all right so as you can see we got the two holes cut pretty easy when you got the right tools five uh five inch diameter hole saw you just attach it to a drill makes uh the whole cutting out of the holes a lot easier so what i'm gonna do now is just kind of clean this up a little bit use some uh sandpaper just clean up the edges then we could go ahead and start uh mounting the <laughs> what then we could go ahead and start mounting the lights all right everyone it's the next morning we've gone ahead and uh made some progress here went ahead and mounted the two lights to the back of the grill. Um, what I went ahead and did here was kind of wrapped the light in a double-sided heavy duty um, industrial tape. Um, one thing I do wanna mention is that when I went ahead and measured these, they were, it was at right about like five inches. So I used a five inch drill saw. I would definitely recommend probably doing a, nine, a four and a half or maybe four and three quarters because when I went ahead to stick it in here, it did have some play because I guess this isn't a perfect circle. I didn't really think about that. So if you guys are gonna go ahead and do this, learn from my mistakes. So that's one mistake that I could have avoided by just using a smaller drill saw in the first, you know, in the first bit. So what I had went ahead and did, like I said, is the double-sided industrial tape. And then I went ahead and used a construction adhesive all around it to basically kind of lock it in place. This stuff um, holds up to like 220 pounds. So for these two little lights, uh, you know, it shouldn't be a big deal. I use this like on job sites. So it was the first thing I could think of because I would have really preferred to create a bracket, but there's really nothing back here that you can more or less attach it to. I guess what I could have done was make like a little L bracket and then rivet it to here. But there's really, you know, it's not much support anyway. I still might do that eventually if uh, there's too much play in here. But for now, I wanted to go ahead, get this on here just to, you know, make sure everything is okay. And I really do think this is going to be fine. Uh, you can go kind of see over here as well. Kind of caked it on there. It's, uh, it's still curing a little bit. It takes a while especially when, um, you know, it's a little bit colder outside, but I have gone ahead and started doing some of the wiring, drilled a hole right in here just so I can feed this through and then I can hide it behind this solid piece over here. I went ahead, did the two butt connections on the positive and negative, and then for the amber, um, 
the, the amber lead. I just went ahead, ran some power cable, connected it to this one, and that way I could feed this up into through the um, up to the auxiliary switch. And then I have the wiring harness over here. So gonna be, like I mentioned before, just gonna be using bits and pieces of this because I'm not gonna need a switch. I'm not gonna need the inline fuse. So cool thing with um, this wiring harness, even though it's a cheap one, it does come with the, um, the sheathing on it, like the weather sheathing. And for the switch, it just has a quick disconnect here. So if I don't wanna use it, I could just you know disconnect it and then I don't have to worry about it. I can't do it with one hand, but right over here, you can see it has the inline fuse and the positive and negative. So when it comes to the wiring, you're just gonna need to uh, ground the wiring harness to the chassis. And then for the power cable, if you don't, if you didn't wanna use the aux switches, obviously you could go ahead and just use the little toggle switch here. Then all you'd have to do is connect this to the positive and negative of the battery, but I'm gonna be running it to the aux switch. So I just have to trim this right here. And then I'm just gonna make a connection to the actual wire for the aux switch that I need. Then over here, you can see, it has the uh, quick connect right here for the two lights. So those are gonna be super easy. Just plug them into the lights that I have installed right now and we'll be good to go. So all I gotta do right now is just wait for this to cure a little bit longer. Oh, one thing I do wanna mention is I went ahead for the power cable for the amber backlights. I just went ahead and soldered them together. You could do, you know, whatever you want, like little connections, but I think doing a little bit of solder and then throwing some heat shrink on there will definitely uh, be the right way to do this. So like I said, just gonna need to uh, wait for this to cure a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding the actual wiring harness through here, start connecting it back here, zip tying it so it's all nice and neat. And then we can continue on with the installation. All right, so we got the grill back, just roughly mounted into position up there. Just gotta go ahead and throw the trim pieces back on there, but you can see, looks pretty sweet. Just gotta do uh, some electrical wiring over here. Obviously this is the um, auxiliary switch electrical, um, the power leads right here. So just need to find the two corresponding wires for um, auxiliary switches three and four. And then I'll be tapping into that. And then we could go ahead and uh, give these lights a test run, but so far, it looked pretty sweet. All right, so we're in the home stretch now, just doing the final wiring. What you wanna do is go ahead and just read this little diagram here to figure out which aux switch you wanna wire this to. So you can see on there it has like, you know, yellow pink that, you know, corresponds with, you know, the wire you wanna use. So for my two smaller gauge wires, I'm already using those for the rock lights and for the LED wheel rings. So for this one, I'm gonna be stepping up to the next ones, which are switch three and four. So went ahead and put a quick disconnect right on here. So did it with the corresponding side over here so I can connect it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on this one. And then I'll put both of them into a heat shrink and just you know seal them so to protect from weather. And then that should be it. And we could go ahead and do a uh, quick test run. And ladies and gentlemen, we are finally all finished and put back together. You can see right there. I absolutely love it. it. Looks super clean. This is exactly what I was going for. I like hiding all my lights behind there. Obviously, it's not going to be, you know, the brightest projection and all that. But if I was really worried about that, I wouldn't have bought, you know, cheap knockoff LP9s. I would have just bought the real thing. But for something cheap, I think this looks awesome. And then, like I was showing you earlier, I went ahead and wired everything to the aux switches. Um, I kind of just type, tucked it in here a little bit. It could be a little bit neater, but it looks a lot better than some other people's uh, wire management. So this is okay with me for now. So you can see right there, one going to uh, aux three, one going to aux four. Just mounted the little, uh, uh, I forgot what this is called, thing up here. I kind of, it's a, escaping me right now. And then just grounded it to this one as well. So let me go ahead. I'll just give you guys quick look at everything so obviously you can see it's turned off let's go ahead get this girl turned on so we'll go ahead 
it aux three first. That should be the main LEDs right there. Looks awesome. And we'll go ahead and turn those off so you can see the amber backlights, which you could totally run during the day. I'll go ahead and I'll turn this on to you so you can see everything. Boom, right there. Super sweet. Really happy with the install. You can kind of just see up in there. The amber backlight, it's got the little light up logo. This one, this one is kind of like crooked a little bit. I need to try and adjust that, but that's just me being anal. But yeah, I think it looks really sweet. So yeah, guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Not too hard of an install, to be 100% honest with you. I hate doing anything, you know, with wiring and electrical. So trust me, if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I'm always down to help any of you guys. Um, it just takes a little bit of time, just some patience. Everything else is pretty, um, pretty easy to figure out. Um, if you guys have any other better ideas of a mounting solution behind there, please share it with me. Because, but as for now, this is going to work fine, I think, anyway. So fingers crossed. But yeah, guys, super stoked with it. So please, guys, if you like these videos, you like shit like this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Um, let me know by doing that that you like the videos and I'll keep making them. So yeah guys, my name is Will. This is the Women YouTube channel and I'll see you guys next time. Later.